Yeah. Hi, I'm Steve Apps. I've, I've been in the Far East for 31 years and the last 10 years in Fire Investigation Research Unit. I've been in the Navy Reserve for coming up to 25 years and over that time I've uh, marched both with the Reserves and also with the, the Fire Brigade. And, and from that little experience I've had, I mean, we're, we're just weekend warriors and occasionally, you know, we, we do this and that for the Navy, uh, in more commercial diving kind of circumstance rather than military diving, as in, you know, attacking ships and defending ships and things. We do the, more, the sort of ship's husbandry kind of things. He, my grandfather was in the First World War in the 7th Light Horse. He volunteered. He was a wool classer at the back of Burke and he volunteered when everyone was young and enthusiastic and had a chance for an overseas trip and he, uh, he, he got his own horse and he, a, a whale as they rode in those days and they, he went to Egypt. They intended to fight in France but uh, when Turkey joined the war they ended up staying in Egypt and going through Palestine and had, uh, he was in a number of major battles including the charge of Bathsheba which was the last of the cavalry charges ever and he was in Damascus, Jerusalem and a few other places. Well, I never knew the questions to ask him. I never really you know, knew, knew the depth of his experience. I didn't know what he'd been through. And it was common for guys of his era not to, not to talk about that. I think they dealt with it by just being quiet about it. And there's probably ghosts inside their, inside their, their, their psyche that were always flying around and they, and they took, the, took that to their grave. And I feel sorry for them. But yeah, he had four years in the uh, seventh light horse um, and yeah, as I said, the charge of Bathsheba. He got shot in the leg there. Luckily, the the Turks defending Bathsheba had um, set the sights to the machine guns low because they were expecting infantry, and they came in as cavalry, effectively cavalry, because the, the light horse was um, was it was infantry on horses technically. So they most of them they the horses hadn't been fed or watered for something like 48 hours and when they smelt the water in, in Bathsheba they, they charged and uh, they got there before they had it, the Germans were able to blow up the wells but that's just one of the things he was involved in. It wasn't, wasn't really marked by any special like medal or commemorative uh, sort of occasion. Unfortunately I was too young to really at, when, he, when he was alive to ask him about the actual battles that he was involved in and his experiences. I did get his war records from Canberra from the museum and found out about his enlistment date and a few of the, uh, few of the adventures he got up to in, in Egypt. But typical of those guys, they didn't like to talk too much about the, the time he was shot. <laughs> he probably shot other people. Um, he was in the war for, for three and a half years, so he would and he was in a lot of major battles, so it's, it's realistic to think that he dealt with some pretty bad things. I think it really focuses your, your life in a, in a way that you don't get when you're sort of at home taking the garbage out on Thursday night. And um, I'll never know exactly, you know, how that changed him as a man. But we'll have a few beers down there, uh, have, catch up with some old mates, a few stories, a few worries, and the sense of camaraderie and the fun you have with the guys. And, you know, the Australian mateship tradition is very, very solid. But if I do have a chance to speak to come, some World War II guys, um, there's fewer and fewer of them, obviously, each year. They're more and more of a living treasure. The, the, the longer they're with us, the the more sort of precious they are. It's a day that celebrates a, a defeat, but out, out of that defeat, I think the more significant thing that we got out of it was showing the Australian character. You know, the, the whole Gallipoli debacle sort of forged our nation and uh, set Australian troops apart from the British troops in terms of our character and what we could achieve. And and I think it's also very sad for us to think just you know, how many of our guys sort of were, were slaughtered in, in, the, in, in the thousands that they were. And I think we remember them 